to uh, be with you virtually at least. And I look forward to the day when we can all gather once again in the sanctuary and celebrate. But today is Palm Sunday. It is a time of great celebration and anticipation. So let us begin now with our call to worship. I'll be using words from Psalm 18, verses 1 through 2, and 19 through 29. Let's hear now what the psalmist writes. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and his marvels in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festival procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will extol thee. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Gracious Father, as we gather and worship today, each in our own homes and various places and various times, you are with each of us, and thus making us a united congregation, here for your glory and honor. So let us worship you in spirit and in truth, and with thanksgiving in our heart. We pray this in all things in Christ's precious name. Amen. And amen. And now I invite you to get at home. If you will stand with me and or you can remain seated and state the words of the Apostles' Creed as we profess that which we believe in our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now our first reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah. I'll be reading from chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. Again, that is chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. And for those of you who wonder of 9a, what does that mean? That means until it goes to the common. Let us hear now what Isaiah wrote. The Lord God has given me a tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insulting or spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And amen. 
and now I have made you continue in our worship. This is the time we may examine ourselves and we realize that we have fallen short of God's glory, that we are in need of his forgiveness. And so I invite you to take a moment of silent prayer and offer up your prayers of confession to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Oh, 
Jerusalem at this time always had lots of energy in the air. You see, the Jews were under the thumb of the Roman Empire. And the Romans, while occupying, and they maintained their presence, they also placed in a Jewish government, which was the king that, who, was a, who was a Jew, this was the Herodians, the Herodians people. And then under that was the Sanhedrin, which was the religious leaders. And so there was tension always, and there was always a little bit of turmoil with these different groups vying for power and, and trying to figure out who knew what. I mean, I don't know if that kind of sounds like what we're going through today when you turn on the news and everybody got something to say and you're not really sure who to listen to, but it, uh, well, it gets intense sometimes. And, and after all the intensity and all the wherewithal, this is all what they said. So I think it's kind of a unique opportunity we have. Now, I'm not saying that God gave us the coronavirus so that we could have a weird Lent ending and a weird Palm Sunday and a weird Easter. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that we have that. It is weird. It is unique. And because of that, we actually can ourselves feel some of the same feelings. That we're going on. Because I'm sure at home, with all that's going on, there is some anticipation. There is some expectation. There is an antsiness. And there is information that you're not really sure who you can trust. We hear whispers. We hear this on this channel and this on that channel. Someone calls us and tells us this. Someone puts a, puts a Facebook post about that. Someone throws a tweet about this. And what is it that we believe? And some of us go out and go, well, it kind of looks, the world's still spinning. You know, it rains and the sun shines. People still blow their grass. The trash can came and picked up our trash. We still have groceries. I mean, we're not going to school or work. We're not really going out and seeing people. So it's this really tumultuous time, this time of turmoil. And so I think we are in a unique place to really feel, to really understand, to really experience a little bit of what was going on that first Palm Sunday. You see, the city of Jerusalem was always in this kind of turmoil and stance, and it was even more so because this was the Passover. Now, what is the Passover? The Passover is when the Jews would celebrate how God delivered them from the oppressive regime of the Egyptians. How he overthrew a pharaoh and set his people free. Now you can imagine this kind of celebration and the things that go with it might not set well with the Romans who were in power over the Jews in their capital city. It wouldn't take an Einstein to draw the line between God overthrew the Pharaoh and God can certainly overthrow the emperor. Our God is that good. Now, this added to the tension. In addition to this, for three years, there has been this new rabbi, this new teacher, this new upstart who's been traversing around the countryside, occasionally coming here and there, and he's been curing people of blindness and leprosy and lameness, and even just last week called the guy out of the tomb. I mean, work gets around. And so, with all of this talk about the Exodus, all of this talk about the deliverance of God's people, and now this figure who is rising up, who is doing things that is delivering people from their captivity to physical frailties and ailments. It's got to mean something. And now, here he's coming to town, and he's riding on a donkey, which fits the prophecy, if you 
you were good and read your Torah, if you went to uh, the temple school and you heard the stories, this was what was prophesied. The king would come and he would come humble, riding on a donkey. You see, most kings riding in are big war horse riding in. But this was to usher in the messianic promise of a humble king, of God doing something different. And so we have all this going on, and you can see how people would get caught up in it. I mean, just like people get caught up in a frenzy now when they hear rumors. Oh, this is going to last for two more weeks. This is going to be in tomorrow. This is going to be forever. This is going to be our normal. The economy is going to crash. I don't know what's going to happen. It's just pandemonium. It's easy to get caught up in the hype. And they were. They do branches. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so Jesus rode in on a donkey into a city already in turmoil, into a, a, a tinderbox, just waiting for a spark. Just waiting for something to ignite the whole thing, and boy, it's going to be a big deal. Something big is going to happen. Everybody knows it. But everybody's trying to kind of get a handle on it. Everybody's trying to get their spin on it. Everybody's going to try to make sure that it works out for them. Which, unfortunately and sadly, is still happening to us today. I mean, think about how big this thing is. There are people who have lost loved ones, and that's a great tragedy. Of course, people lose loved ones every day to other things like cancer, heart attacks, car accidents, the flu, and now corona. It's all tragic. But in the midst of this tragedy, there are some who would use this, who would try to shape it, and they would try to force it to become, you know, a weapon they could use against the other side. See, they didn't do enough. They didn't do it in time. They didn't help us. They're not doing everything right. They didn't do everything the right way. How could they not know? Well, how could you know? This is a new thing. Nobody knew what was going to happen when Jesus came in. Nobody knows what's happening now. Except they know a little bit. They're on the ground. They're fighting. They're taking care of it. And so, yes, there's anticipation. Yes, there's cause from concern. But there is something guiding. See, that, that's the problem. Here because, well, it's out of control. It's just running amok. But is it? Have we forgotten to list all the factors? Now, maybe the Roman governor, the prefect, is not in charge. Maybe the king is not in charge. Maybe Herod's not in charge. Who knows who's in charge? But we know ultimately who's in charge, right? Is it the then the Republicans? Is it the House? Is it the Senate? Is it the judiciary? Is it the legislative branch? Is it the executive branch? They each have their part to play. But who ultimately is in charge is God. God has had this from the beginning. Nothing surprises God. Nothing catches God off guard. Nothing is beyond what God can do. And so we have that reassurance. And that's the kind of reassurance that Jesus came into humbly, peacefully, riding on this donkey. In the midst of all this turmoil, he was just simply there and present. And he was coming into what was soon going to be a very important time with very important events. And they were going to click off as they were meant. But not one of them outside of God's control. It may seem like it. And as we go through the Holy Week, as we, this week, I'll do some videos and put them out there for Monday, Thursday, and Friday as we do those. It gets intense. It gets scary. It's scary now. It's intense now. What's going to happen? Well, I do know what happens in Easter, if you all do. I don't know what's going to happen. Here 
in Trenton or in West Tennessee or in the Southeast or in America or in the world. I know there's going to be some good. There's going to be some bad. There's going to be a whole lot of finger pointing and blame. There's going to be some pain and suffering. There's going to be a whole lot of ugly because apparently we can't do without ugly. I don't know why. But I promise you, God is in control. God has this as he always has. And he says, just wait. Even in the dark tower, even when all the sirens are wailing, when all the alarms are going off, when your action fits in, when you don't know if you could hang on another day, well, if you don't know if you could hang on another day, hang on another hour. If you don't know if you can hang on another hour, hang on another minute. Because God is with you in that day, in that hour, in that day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The stone that was rejected by the builders, the plan, the things that God gave us were thrown out by those that were in the know. And yet that became the chief cornerstone that Christ did for us. When Christ came in and began on Palm Sunday was the beginning of the salvation that God was working out for us. It was the beginning of the hope that God had promised us. And so, while we're sitting at home, while we're a little bit antsy, while we thought this was going to be over last week, we hoped it was, and it could have been. It, I wish it was, but it's not. A little bit longer. But God's still in charge. God's still in control. God's still at the helm. He still knows what we need. He is still caring for us. He is still there with us. And so pray. Seek Him. And now, in a moment, we're going to do one of the things that God gave us that it is going to be a unique thing. It's going to be the first time I've ever done this. And probably for y'all, we're going to do cyber communion. Yes, this video, people are going to watch it at different times, in different places, and yet, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through God who is eternal, who is beyond space and time, who is not hampered by our walls, or by our calendars, or our clocks. He will be with us, and we will be partaking in this Holy Supper together. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds to come to the table of the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, I give you thanks and praise for all the many gifts that you give to us, all the many ways that you sustain us, even to this very hour. And now, Lord, as we come to the time for communion, I ask, Lord, that you be with us each in our own place, and you remind us that you unite and tie us together. We pray this in all things, in Christ's holy name. Amen and amen. And I am going to go through the liturgy. It's going to be a little bit different today. But we will get through it. If you remember it, great. Um, we're going to try to put the words up. But um, let us go through the community liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Eternal God, you who have created the heavens and the earth, we offer you our praise for women and men of faith. We offer, we offer you our praise and give you thanks for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making each of us in your own image, that you have forgiven us, even though we act as though you have no claim upon us, that you have kept us in your steadfast care, even into this hour. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only eternally begotten by you, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We remember Christ's death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection and the beloved community of your church 
we await Christ's return at the end of history. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. We offer you our praise for women and men of faith in every age who stand as witnesses to your love and justice with all the prophets and the martyrs and the saints and all the company of heaven. We glorify you now as we say together the words of the doxology. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, hopefully, each of you at home will take this time to um, get your grape juice and your bread and pass it out. And as you do that, let us remember that on the night when you have prayed, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. Saying, this is my body, broken for you. Take, eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he blessed it and said, this is the cup. My blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink. Do this also. Remembrance of me. By the eating of this bread and the drinking of this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and we await his return at the end of time. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen and amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of salvation poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Yeah.